I wrote my book Imagining India over three years back. It is a book of ideas because I felt that the best way to trace the evolution of a country and its future was to see how ideas in a country changed. And therefore, I classified my book into four types of ideas. Ideas that have arrived, which means that over the last 60 years they have changed and they have arrived. Ideas that we have agreed about but have not yet implemented. Ideas that we have argued about and ideas that we need to anticipate in the future. For example, in the idea that have arrived, I tried to make a point that in the last 60 years, our view of globalization, our view of democracy, our view of technology, our view of the entrepreneur, of the English language, and our view of demographics had changed radically. For a long time, Indians thought of our population as a challenge, but now we talk about the demographic dividend which means we have a lot of young people who can work uh, and therefore contribute to the economy. Similarly, uh, post-independent India was very suspicious of entrepreneurs, but in the last few years has recognized the critical role that entrepreneurship plays in, in India. Similarly, in the section which talk about ideas that have not yet been implemented is things like primary education and urbanization, where we've agreed that we have to do something, but nothing is happening. In the section on ideas that are being argued about, I talk about things like labor reforms and higher education, which is still a very contentious issue. And then most importantly, at the end, I talk about ideas we need to anticipate because we need to think about how to address the challenge of energy and do that in a way that the environment is sustained. We have to think about what happens when a young population grows old and we need to think of, therefore, what is the pension and healthcare systems that we need. And then I talk about technology and how after the first experience of technology, Indians have become very positive about technology and therefore, in some sense, what are the future things we can do with technology? And in fact, that chapter of my book talks about the need for a national uh, ID number and by a coincidence, uh, three years later, I'm actually implementing uh, this idea as the chairman of the Unique Identification Authority of India. So in some sense, I'm practicing what I preached in my book. I think the book was, uh, for me, a very pleasant surprise. It was a great success. It was on the national bestseller list. It was on the New York Times bestseller list. I really liked the way that people responded to the ideas. Now, uh, three years later, looking back, uh, the ideas and the framework which uh, I defined in the book is still very valid. It's a, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a way of looking at India through a lens of ideas. And I do hope that uh, the, some of the things that I talked about in the book do get implemented because I genuinely believe that uh, India has all the strategic advantages going for it in terms of its young uh, population, in terms of its uh, entrepreneurs, in the fact that it has uh, English as a language of business, the fact that Indians are now comfortable with globalization. And therefore, I think it's really an opportunity that comes once in the uh, life of a nation and I do hope that we'll all rise to the challenge and make full use of it. Thank you.